Oh my goodness, it looks like this person is gonna fight Giga Pingu. No, what are you doing? Honestly, I could make this game free to play and just live entirely off of the profit margins that we're gaining from this incredible respawn point. That's right, you're buying this game for $40, but you're gonna need to spend a grand to leave level one. It's perfect. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing MMORPG Tycoon 2. My goodness, such a long abbreviation there. Now today we're going to be effectively conning people by creating an MMO, because at the end of the day, an MMO is just a long monotonous grind, which you do over and over again until you get completely burnt out by it and you see little to no improvement. It's just like working a real world job and people will actually pay us to enjoy this experience of basically working. Similar to Germans and farming simulators, we can convince anyone in the world that they absolutely have to kill 1000 regular boars over and over again for basically no reward or meaningful advancement in their life. It's amazing. If you like designing elaborate wonderful worlds, open plan landscapes and fantastic stories, then you'd make a terrible MMO developer. If you like copy pasting the same thing over and over again one million times, then congratulations have I got a job for you. You're going to love this game. So today we're going to be creating a brand new MMO game using this game and then we're going to be selling it to people for fantastic profits. Now we technically did this before, I've live streamed this game and we created the wonderful world of Queen's Quest, an MMO set to simulate the entire life of Great Britain, where the first starting quest in the game was to go and harvest tea, and the level 1 starting enemies were all coffee beans. Trust me, it was a glorious game, but there was one issue. We made a game of creativeness, of joy and happiness. Today, we throw that out the window, and we make games the way EA designed it to be. And trust me, EA just works. So we're going to make a game entirely focused on revenue. And to assist us in that goal and making sure we create the greatest thing possible, I shall be doing what all good EA developers do, by drinking large copious quantities of gin and tonics before starting actual work. Consequently, the end product will be an incoherent nightmare mess, but it shall be a game. Right, now let us make our game. World of Guilds, no. Guardian of Swords, no. These are terrible names. Instead, we shall create the game of Scam Art Online. It's going to be amazing. We're going to put these nice swords as a logo. Oh, it'll be perfect. Right, next, what kind of MMO do we want to make? Naturally, we're making a story game. Why is this? You get flight paths. Flight paths, amazing. I'll explain later. And then when it comes to actually allocating our points for this game, we currently have a large amount of bonuses to theming and exploration. We're going to throw the rest of it into advertising because we need advertising to make money. Trust me, it's perfectly balanced. Anyway, without further ado, let us create the wonderful world of Scam Art Online. Brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a brand new world created just for us to enjoy and create it's scam art online oh it's beautiful look at this two completely and utterly separate continents we can probably charge people 700 pounds to move from this continent to the next it's perfect now this is our world and we need to populate this world with our glorious video game. It's going to start simple and then grow nice and complicated. And you know what, I think we should start it off right down here in the bottom corner of the map. We're going to have our starting region of Scam Zone 1. And what we're going to do is design an MMO like no other. You see most MMOs are all about level progression and that makes complete and utter logical sense. However, we're going to throw all of that out of the window by instead creating the weirdest design in the universe. For a start, monsters are going to give basically no XP. How many quests will it take to go from level 1 to 2? It's not going to take 10 quests, it's going to take 100. That's right. Our aim is to make the slowest game imaginable so that basically no one is ever going to leave level 1. That way we don't have to actually design the rest of the game, and if people do eventually leave level 1, it's going to cost them. Now we're going to purchase this first area as our main starting zone and then we'll create a zone 2 over here. But of course, pro tip if you're ever designing an MMO, players need to move from one zone to the next, but there's a great big mountain in the way that they can't traverse. However, we can allow them to traverse using incredibly expensive flight paths. That's right, we place this bad boy down here. It costs us 4,000 to build, but what can we do? We can say that this bad boy costs real world money to use, and it's going to cost you 1,000 pounds to use the floaty bird to leave the level one starter zone. That's right, you're buying this game for $40, 
dollars, but you're gonna need to spend a grand to leave level one. It's perfect. Next up, we actually need to design this starting area. We have this really cool setup here where I think it'll be perfect to allow people to enter. And so we'll then have some nice monsters for them to fight over here. But for the most part, we'll have lots of nice fun inns on a main road and then just a large amount of things to fight off. Right, and perfect. I think we now have our first little settlement set up. Now when it comes to our first enemy that all of our level 1 scrub nubs are going to have to fight, we're going to not use crocodiles or bears or kobolds, nope, we're going to actually create our own enemy. Our first level 1 enemy is of course going to be none other than Evil Business Pingu, a very angry businessman-like penguin. Naturally we're going to make them really, really difficult to kill. We can make them slow, but just absolute tanks that are going to be an absolute nightmare to kill. Now it's time for us to spawn all of these amazing dapper pingus for us to fight. Right, now we've probably decorated up our lovely, amazing dapper penguin area, but naturally, every dapper penguin area needs some kind of boss. So we're going to have an evil business penguin mini boss. This is going to be kind of like a giga penguin. And you know what? We can even rename him. He's not going to be gore blood. His name is going to be giga pingu. Now, giga pingu is like a regular pingu, but he has more health and does more damage. He is an absolute tank. So naturally, we need to also make Make ourselves a quest. This man is going to have a very important quest, which is going to be go and kill Gigapingu. Destroy Gigapingu. One of the most important quests in the game provides zero experience and ten gold. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's this game is going to be an absolute challenge. It's going to become the Dark Souls of MMOs. But then again, everything's the Dark Souls of MMOs if PC Gamer can't beat it. Anyway, it's time for us to upgrade our game and get ourselves a starting point. So, we're bam, let us get our starting point down. This is going to be where everyone enters into the world from. And this is how people shall enter into Scam Art Online. Yes. Oh, it's going to be absolutely glorious. I can't wait for our grand opening. Oh, also, I've built this wonderful set piece because in my head cannon, for some reason, the penguins are laying siege to the lovely starting town. Don't ask why the penguins are laying siege. You know, they're just business people. It's kind of like the blockade at the start of the Star Wars prequels. Does it make sense? No, but it is happening. These people have money. They can do what they like. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the start of our wonderful game. Oh my goodness, it looks amazing. Look at it. Sweeping views. Vector Storm presents. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Here it is, the game of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Produced by the Australians. That's right, they made it. Code by Trevor. He did it. Look at the starting gate. It's beautiful. Oh, it's wonderful. Our starting town. Oh, it's amazing. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. MMORPG Tycoon 2 presents presents the one, the only, Scam Art Online. Oh, yes, it's here. Here comes our first player. Here they are. It's the moment we're waiting for. It's Chugasm and Pilotio, <laughs> our two first players. Chugasm, ah, oh, amazing. Right, we're gonna favorite both of these people so that we can see what they get up to, but these are our first paying players. Now, when I say paying players, I mean they've actually paid to be here. Because we take a look at the sales, side of things it costs 40 pounds to buy this mmo and once you've bought it you then have to pay a 10 pound a month subscription fee fantastic now it's going to take quite a while before people actually subscribe up to our mmo so we're going to have to do some advertising and that's basically where we're going to be spending the remainder of all of our money so we're going to start a magazine advertising campaign a website advertising campaign and a game exposition advertising campaign this is going to leave us with no money whatsoever but it's okay because we can just summon money out of thin air how are we going to do that well we're going to temporarily crank up the purchase price of this game from 40 to 400 because because now if someone wants to buy this game, it's going to cost them £400. And are they going to buy this game? Maybe. Here's why. We've just started a whole bunch of amazing advertising campaigns. And who doesn't want to buy a game that they've seen advertised to them? Come on, surely someone. Someone will buy this game. Please. It's amazing. You know you want to. Don't make me crank down the sales game. Okay, fine. I understand we need more than six players if we're going to convince people to play this game. Fine. I'll lower the price to 40 Are you happy? You best be happy. Until we get kind of around about 100 subscribers, it's going to take us a while to get this ball rolling. Because generally, word of mouth is how we're going to be spreading lovely news of our game. But already our first few players are in and they're going to be picking up their first few quests to go and murder giant fleets of penguins for basically no reward. Oh, and I think we just had our first player die, actually. Yep, our first player just straight up died over here. They killed one penguin and then they died. Perfect, this is how I like it. 
I think this is our player. He is ever so slightly frustrated at the moment. How could you possibly be frustrated, friend? Okay, he's just upset that he keeps dying. Well, look, it's not my fault that the penguins you're fighting have insane quantities of health, okay? Okay, I suppose maybe I can nerf the penguins. Fine. After a single person has requested it, we are nerfing the penguins. All right, there we have it. Penguins are dead. Oh my goodness, and our first player has reached level two. He's reached level two. He's only murdered like one thing. What the heck? How has he got level two already? I need to rebalance this game. That's not okay. He's not allowed to have level two yet. Right, here it is. Kills per level. Perfect. Yes, we're going to need 200 kills per level. That makes a lot more sense now. To also counter the raid will lower the health of the enemy so that they're a little bit easier to kill, but everyone does need to kill 100 of them. I can't believe I imbalanced the games to allow someone to level up after just killing one monster. That is entirely my bad, but it's okay. We've solved it. The balance has now been restored. Now players shall feel like gods, for they are able to one-hit most of the enemies in the game. Look at him go. Okay, he killed, he killed about two of them before he died. Wow, we are actually starting to get a great big flood of new players now we're up to 63 subscribers this is fantastic stuff of course it is going to be quite a long while and it's going to take a lot of grinding before players actually level up but you know they're going to make it one day so far no one has actually had to come over here and kill giga pingu yet but it is only a matter of time before someone picks up the quest to kill giga pingu oh my goodness it looks like this person is going to fight giga pingu no what are you doing you can't fight giga pingu oh you're dead rest in peace tress first person to attempt to kill giga pingu it was just not going to work out come on it's giga pingu okay but things are looking quite good at the moment we now have 123 active subscribers this is a very good sign what is the overall hype of our mmo looking like so far, people really like the scenery. They think it's amazing. They really like the starting town. This is perfect. Really good stuff indeed. In terms of rating, there is very minor online buzz. There is some online buzz about our game. Perfect. As is always the case, the more players we get, the more buzz we get. So we just need more players. Now this is really starting to get good. We have 326 subscribers, 9,000 in savings. This is a really good sign. We're going to start seeing a gigantic flood of players coming into our game just to murder penguins, and that is glorious. Of course, it is basically going to be impossible for any of them to level up, but just look at all of these happy people wandering into our glorious video game. They're all having an absolute blast, and all they've had to do is murder a bazillion pingus. Online Buzz is doing really well now. This is fantastic. Basically, we're convincing three people per day now to actually, you know, stay subscribed this is amazing now this has become an incredibly social game we are now up to 451 subscribers this is amazing so many players just enjoying our wonderful world where they just have to go and murder penguins all day and you know what apparently that's a good life people like this life now, one thing we can do to just milk additional money out of our subscribers is to abuse the inn. As you see, everyone has to actually sign themselves up to an inn. So far, most new players are setting this inn as their residence. But as soon as 1,000 people claim this inn, people have to go elsewhere. This inn can take people on board. And so that's where these two inns come into the picture. Because what we can do is charge real-world money for these inns. So we're going to charge £100 for this single inn. And this inn over here is going to cost £1 thousand pounds basically the later you are arriving to the game the more it's going to cost you to actually even play the thing now that's balance now i wonder if we can actually also cheese the respawn mechanic in this game because basically we can also set the cost of respawn points and so i'm wondering if we put ourselves a respawn point right in the center of combat in the middle here and just make it really expensive to use will people who die simply pay extra just to revive closer to where they died so we're going to charge 10 people the privilege for reviving right in the middle of penguin town and oh my goodness, it looks like they're doing it. Yep, they're doing it. Oh, this is amazing. Look at the people respawning in. Yes, every time someone dies, we get 10 pounds. It's perfect. Ah, lovely. Now that's capitalism, baby. Ah, uh, we're making good money. It's up to 700 people playing the game, and it's not even the end of day one. We are just halfway through day one, and already there are hundreds and hundreds of people playing our video game. It is beautiful to see. Just look at all of these people. Now here's my thinking, for the first day this game's only going to cost £40 to purchase, but after the first day we are going to increase the price. Oh yes, we're going to increase the price because we're going to have a thousand subscribers by the end of this first day. That's a lot of people. But we can have more. Oh yes, we can have oh so much more. I can't believe also just how much money we're making from all of the users using this 
cheaper respawn point. It is incredible. They're just willing to throw £10 to just respawn slightly closer to the combat field. It is amazing. And this is the best thing. This guy just paid £10 to spawn in. He picks up his stuff, spawns in, and then is immediately going to get ganked by the penguins. Dies, pays £10, spawns in. Guess what? He's going to go immediately straight back on over here. Look at him come beelining straight back in, and then he dies again. And he pays £10. This is this guy spent £30 just to respawn and be killed by the same penguin over and over again. It's perfect. Oh my goodness, they should make me a game designer. I mean, admittedly, most of my games would probably be barred by the Geneva Conventions for actually engaging in psychological warfare practices, but still, they should let me make video games. They'd be amazing, really profitable. I'll tell you what, if I ever do make a video game, I need to allow my community to invest because, because I know that you guys are 100% certain that in the very least, whilst I might not make a good video game, I can make a very profitable video game. Ah, because money is something I'm very good at making. Oh my goodness, look at them. They just keep spawning in and dying and then coming back and dying over and over again, occasionally killing one penguin. But guess what? I'm sorry, killing one penguin is not progress, my friends. No, 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 no. There is only one person who is level two. The legendary Chewgasm, who's technically logged out at the moment. Oh, and also, by the way, fun fact, in order to log out in this game, you need to log out at an inn. That's right, you need to log out at an inn. But guess what? It costs money to log out. This game is literally sought out online. You know how in Sword Out Online, in order to technically leave the game, you had to die? Well, in this game, you need to effectively kill your bank account by going and paying money to actually log out at the local inn. Otherwise, you have to play forever, continuously paying the endless subscription fee until the end of time. It's beautiful. Now this is how to make money. Truly how to make glorious money. Right, well our first day is almost over and we have made a copious quantity of cash. I'll tell you what, we can probably actually improve this game even further because one fun fact, people like the games based on the scenery they have, so when you add in more scenery, naturally people like the games more. So how can you cheese this? Well, it's called an auto clicker, ladies and gentlemen, and seeing as most of these plants only cost £10 to place, we're going to place down a gigantic quantity of them. Well, bam, people are going to just love this bit of scenery. Guess what, we can even do one right on the other side. And we can even do one over here. Perfect stuff. Look at this beautiful scenery we're creating for our game. Absolutely majestic stuff. Beautiful game design. 11 out of 10. Oh, we actually get to upgrade. Ah, yes, because that's right. Upgrades are based on the amount of scenery objects you have in your game, not actually off of anything else. Naturally, we just want to actually improve the ability of our advertising campaigns because advertising is all that matters. Well, so far, people are absolutely loving our game. This has gone splendidly well for us. And we have now just entered into day two. Perfect. Now, as you can see, we have 1,600 people currently playing our game. An endless stream of new people just spawning in just to see what this is like. So naturally, we need to get money out of them. How do we do this? Well, it's quite simple. We're increasing the cost of the game. We're going into the sales section. This game is no longer going to be £40 to purchase. No, 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 no. The game is now £1,000 to purchase. You want to play this game? £1,000. Let's see who is the next sucker to purchase our game. There we go. Someone just walked in. Bam. £1,000. Another person just walked in. Another. Look at them come in. More of them are spawning in. Oh my goodness. So many more people are spawning in. Yes. Money. Money. Oh my goodness. We've tapped into the Star Citizen crowd. <laughs> Perfect. A streamer has connected. A streamer called Kitten Purple. Lovely. Let us mark them and make sure they enjoy their time here. Oh, this is fantastic. Honestly, our MMO has now just become Star Citizen. It is entirely a really nice tech demo of one starting area with a whole bunch of shiny scenery objects that cost you a thousand pounds to enter. And if you want to progress even further towards the late game content, well, that's going to cost you a grand to ride on the birdie bird. But of course, in order to actually ride on the birdie bird, you would have technically needed to kill 100 penguins, which is a lot of penguins. Anyway, I want to actually level up to the next region very soon, so it's time for more scenery objects, ladies and gentlemen as I'm going to place down a whole bunch of logs over here. Ooh, look at these logs. There we go. Look at the server version just increasing. And we're bam, we're ready to upgrade. Perfect. Okay, we're now going to unlock parties. I think parties is a good idea. 
Yes, we're going to add parties. Lovely. This is going to allow everyone to group up and murder penguins at an incredible rate. Right, parties can now be formed. This will streamline the penguin murdering process as players now group up and die en masse at this glorious respawn point which has made us so much money. Oh my goodness. It had 150 users yesterday and 66 users today. This is insane. Imagine being the peasant that just uses the regular respawn point. Pathetic. And this inn had people spend over £5,000 on day one just to use the easiest inn to the field of combat. This is insane. Absolutely insane. And I didn't realise, but this inn over here was charging people £100. Okay, let's lower that to 10 I can't believe that this inn was charging £100 for people to log in and out of the game. Okay, we can calm that down. Oh my goodness, we now have £300,000 in the bank. It is this easy to make MMOs. We've only gained more subscribers. More people are playing this game than ever before. And it is now costing them £1,000 to just buy it. This is ridiculous. This is perfection. Happiness in the game has actually gone up. People have enjoyed this game more now that it costs a thousand pounds. Now that the peasants can't gain access to this game, it's my favorite game in the universe. Ah oh, yes. Clarence, fetch me my bank card. <laughs> I've got a game to play. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, our streamer has disconnected. Did they have fun? Seems they had a good time. Yay! Estimated extra subscribers, 500. <gasps> that's amazing. If, if we get 500 more subscribers, that's 500,000 pounds. That would be insane. <laughs> I love breaking video games. Now, of course, remember, ladies and gentlemen, this game is early access and consequently balancing is not exactly present, but soon it will be. One day, eventually. But until then, we're going to be cheesing this to its maximum. Now, one thing people are saying about the evil business Pingu Zone is that its beauty is relatively medium. So what can we do about that? Well, we can improve the beauty of the Penguin Zone by creating gigantic pillars of ice every few inches just to crank up that scenery score even further. That's right, this entire zone shall be encased in a glorious wall of ice and death. Now let's see what that scenery score looks like. Oh, 5.5, very high. Good. Oh, and we can upgrade even further. More to the advertising. Good, release. Crank up that advertising. We've got 2,000 subscribers now. This is beautiful. Let's get even more scenery in these nice little bushes. They don't take up much space. Some pumpkins, lovely. More other little bushes. Just a whole bunch of benches. Why not? Let's get some benches in there. These weird skull totems. It's going to be a very messy, eclectic zone. But honestly, people are going to love it. Oh, some random spike traps everywhere. Perfect stuff. Look at this. Fantastic. How's the zone looking now? High beauty. Good stuff indeed. I'm just going to place a bajillion rocks right here because I mean I've got infinite money for rocks so I'm just gonna hold down my mouse button place even more rocks into this just zone of infinite rocks because apparently rocks have no collision on them meaning I can place as many as I like right all of those rocks down ah oh, high beauty it's perfect look at this zone I mean it is a zone of something maybe not necessarily beauty but it is something anyway once again we'll just increase our advertising capabilities you know, I think it's probably time that we actually pay off our starting loan, because why not? Bam, repay loan. We've done it. Money is now ours. We now have fiscal freedom. I'll tell you what we can do. We can actually crank down the subscription fee probably to zero, because let's be honest, we don't really need to get money off of the subscription at this point. We just get money off of people dying. The subscription is purely optional. Dead bodies are what truly fund this game. Oh my goodness, people are ganking the Giga Pingu now. This is insane. I thought Giga Pingu was meant to be a challenge, but it's just getting absolutely murked <laughs> continuously. <laughs> oh, poor Giga Pingu. Right, people are actually running out of space for the inn, so I guess I need to place down a brand new inn right out once again on the front lines. But actually, I could just place an entire inn right in the middle of the zone. Okay, I'm going to put an inn right here, right in the middle of the combat zone. This one is going to offer, for real money, at just £10, a faster way of logging out of the game when you rage quit for dying to the same Pingu a bajillion times. Oh, and also, seeing as players are now in parties and are able to kill the Pingus a bit faster, I think it only makes natural sense that we make the Pingus just a little bit more difficult. Honestly, I could make this game free to play and just live entirely off of the profit margins that we're gaining from this incredible respawn point. It is absolutely ridiculous, but it is just so goddamn profitable. It's amazing. I love it. Right, now that we've made the Pingus just a little bit harder, this is fantastic. Basically, the more difficult we make the enemies, the better it is for us, because it ultimately means more people are dying. And every time someone dies, we just get £10 out of thin air. 
It's perfect. Now you see, some games are pay to win. This is a true skill based game, okay? It's not pay to win, provided you've already paid the £1,000 to buy the game. And secondly, you just pay when you die. So if you don't die, you don't really have to spend that much money, okay? Oh my goodness, look at how far some people are off of leveling. They're like a quarter of the way there. This is insane. This person has been playing for ages. He's played for one hour in total. But actually, no, he's played for more than one hour. He's, he's played for basically one day. My goodness. <laughs> Okay, this guy's a night. This guy's mad. He's played for one day and 18 hours, and all he has to show for it is that he's now a quarter of the way to actually getting to level two. Oh dear, and what awaits him at level two? Well, it's just some crocodiles, really, at the moment. Just some crocodiles. Right, you know, let's do a quick check just to see if anyone is actually cheating because um, I don't know why you cheated this game, but look at that. Some people have actually cheated. Speed hacks. Imagine speed hacking in a game where you basically can't progress anyway. Right, banned. There you go. Cheaters never prosper, you know, except, except when they're me. I've, I've prospered quite fine from cheating, I've got to be honest. Oh my goodness, look at all of these cheaters. An item duper? <gasps> How dare he? Right, all three of these players, bam. Lil Pump, banned. Right, they're all banned, lovely. I suppose one thing I can do is I can actually take control of the bosses in the game. Yep, that's right. Right, bam, I am now in control. Murder, murder, stab, stab. Stab, and I'm dead. Okay, gotta be honest, I'm not the best one to be controlling Gigapingu, but if people are starting to murder Gigapingu, then I think it only makes perfect sense that we give Gigapingu a sidekick. And that sidekick is gonna be none other than the Swedish chef, ladies and gentlemen. Let us spawn him in. Swedish chef is incredible. He has a base health pool of 60, making him a nightmare to kill. He's not just any chef, he's an elite Swedish chef. He will be single-handedly murdering everyone to defend the penguin. It looks like he might actually be killed here, but there you go, he took down four players with him. And you know what that means? That's 40 pounds. Every time he murders someone, that's 10 pounds in our pocket. Now that's capitalism. Honestly, this MMO design is going fantastic. You know what, I think I should probably build some homes for the penguins here, you know what? So let's give them a little house. There we go. Now, you might be wondering how a penguin actually builds his house. Well, he glues it together, doesn't he? Okay, that joke is just terrible. <laughs> Come on, that one is amazing. That's the kind of joke you get on the side of a penguin wrapper. That's how good it is. Now, there is one issue with all of these lovely scenery options. All of these tables are square. This is a real shame. As fun fact, I actually know who built the round table. It was built by the legendary circumference. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now, I actually love a fantasy medieval world for one very simple reason. In a democracy, it's your vote that counts, but in feudalism, it's your count that votes. <laughs> now, I have streamlined this game just a little bit by creating an amazing new quest line. As you see, our lovely quest giver here, King Fetikor, who's a wizard, offers one very important quest which you need to complete in order to actually unlock his other quests. Quest number one is simple. Go to this small inn over here and set it as your home. And that's right, this is an actual quest you have to do. You have to walk over here and set this as your home. Setting this as your home costs you 10 pounds of real money. <laughs> that's right, you have to spend money to complete the quest. But then after you do that, you then get to go and kill some business penguins and then for the final quest he offers you have to go to this in here and set it as your home that also costs you five pounds in real world money this man's entire quest line costs every single person 15 pounds to do 459 people have finished his quest today this is mmo monetization the likes of which ea has never even imagined physically charging people to complete quests and with it we're about to cross over into making one million pounds this is glorious absolutely glorious we're still yet to see anyone move into the level two zone but you know it's going to take him a while to level up right now also have added in a few more field bosses for people to fight another additional giga pingu over here just to provide a bonus challenge as well as another giga pingu over here and you know what they should probably also have some swedish chefs to assist them because those swedish chefs my goodness are they powerful they can always at least take one or two adventurers with them and every time they take an adventurer away that's money into our pocket speaking of which we're up to one million pounds ladies and gentlemen that's right scam out online has now made one million 
million pounds off of just 2,700 subscribers. That is incredible. Let's take a look at the overview of this game. Happiness 4.6. This is amazing. You know what? Seeing as we have made so much money, I think we can probably just crank down the sales of this game to just a low zero. We can allow everyone and anyone into this game. Why not? Let's just get some more players in because after all, we can just charge the money whilst they're playing the game every time they die. And seeing as we have the Pingu area set up, I think it makes only logical sense that we also build another enemy area. Okay, you know what, to make this even more challenging, we're going to create chickens, ladies and gentlemen. These shall be the next enemies of the zone. A gigantic swarm of chickens. And also, this region is overloaded because we have so many players online. Well, this is fantastic news. This is just a sign of lots of new players because we cranked down the price. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to boost this region entirely. We're going to need to build ourselves a server so that more players can actually play here. And then also crank on down another uplink node. All right, splendid stuff. All right, I've now handcrafted the Giga Pingu area. Oh, and we can actually also upgrade our game. We can unlock guilds or friends lists. Actually, we could just enable PvP jewels. This is a fantastic idea. I mean, ultimately, PvP jewels are just going to end up with people murdering each other. And every time people die, we make money. So, we're going to enable PvP. And now in our brand new Giga Pingu area, we're going to also set up two brand new inns. This one is going to cost you £10 to register at. And this respawn point over here is going to cost you... 100 real world pounds to actually respawn at. Perfect. And we've got a nice quantity of giga chickens out here that you have to actually murder. Like our first mini boss, Megacock. <laughs> He's certainly going to be quite intimidating. And then we have our other field boss over here, Monstercock. These two, these two bosses are going to hopefully murder so many players that we're going to be able to generate a copious quantity of money. It should be fantastic. And already some new players are running on over here to see what all of the new content is. I'm just going to quickly customize some of these quests. This, uh, this first mission is going to all be about going to this inn and spending £10 set it as your actual home. And this mission can go be to kill the monster cock. There you go. Strong arm monster cock and interview mega cock. <laughs> these are not good quest names. Oh no. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, I'm starting to see that a couple of people are dying. This is a fantastic sign. Money will be made. Lots of money shall be made here. Oh, fantastic. Look at all the new players we're wandering around. There are, there are like 800 players online at the moment. This is incredible. And we're making money from them. Lovely, lovely, lovely money. Still no one has actually managed to achieve level 2 other than our first original player. I'm also going to build a small outpost over here where we can have some NPC guards, you know, just to stand around and actually help the adventurers if they're struggling to win. There we go, a couple of fun guards here. Maybe even get a scout trainer out of here. Yes, that's a splendid idea. And we can even upgrade our game even further, right? Let us improve advertising even more. And seeing as advertising is being improved and the game is doing fantastic, I think it's naturally only time that we increase the price of the game again. That's right, we're cranking it right back on up to 1,000 because, I mean, look at all of the positive buzz of the game so much positive online buzz i still don't get why people are purchasing this game but honestly we only need like five people to purchase this game each hour and we're going to be able to run this game forever the operating cost of running an mmo ridiculously cheap it turns out and if people are willing to spend a grand on this game, then fantastic. They can come and kill a million chickens for all I care. Good for them. <laughs> We're still yet to see anyone reach level 2. As soon as someone naturally reaches level 2 after killing 200 chickens or penguins, that's when I'm going to be truly happy. Ah, uh, look at this. A beautiful day in our glorious MMO. We've only gone and done it. Scam Art Online has made 2 million pounds. It has made me a filthy, filthy millionaire. And my goodness, is it glorious. And best of all, we can up to the next version. In this version, we shall improve the fluff and we'll just release it straight away. You know what? Actually, I'm just going to grind this out to create the greatest MMO in the universe. And seeing as scenery is all it takes to level up, well, that's all I'll do. I'll place down 100 bits of scenery. So just spam down my auto clicker like so. Doopa doopa doo do doo do doo do 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 do. And next version upgrade. We're going to add in a friends list. There we go. We're bam. People are going to love that feature. And now we're going to add in even more items because why not just whack on even more of them? We're in version four at the moment. That's how amazing we are. And bam, immediate next upgrade. Improve the theming and fluff. We're going to create the greatest themed game all off of these single bushes that I'm spamming down over and over again. Right, we're now getting a 30% boost to theming just off of all of our items that we've spammed everywhere. This is incredible, ladies and gentlemen. We have designed art. 
And we can even do it once more. Oh my goodness, we're on version 4.4. These bushes only cost us £10 to place, and yet their yields are incredible. Think of all of the money we're able to make. All right, we're going to add in some world history just for fun, some more fluff. And oh my goodness, we got the big 5 -0. that's right, we're in version 5. Oh, it's amazing. Oh my goodness, this has gone fantastic. Version 5.3, this version is just our greatest version we've ever created. Oh my goodness, we're doing such a fantastic job and making so much money. You know what, I think we should create the greatest MMO in the universe, and the best way to do that is to make it good value for money. And seeing as we have two million in the bank and we're never going to go bankrupt, let's just make this game free to play. Bam, the game is now free. We should now see a relatively large increase in players coming into the server, and oh my goodness, here they come, ladies and gentlemen. The unwashed hordes of free-to-play players, ready to throw themselves at my beautiful universe. The fact we have PvP jewels is also going to massively increase the money we're making because basically every time you die in PvP combat you have to respawn, but of course you pay money when you respawn. It's basically a pay to die situation. Oh and also people are now using the 1000 pound mega bird to fly to the next zone. What's in the next zone? It's it's just crocodiles ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing else. It's crocodiles and another really expensive inn. In fact two really expensive inns. Look at them, this one's already full up. <laughs> Guess what? You also have to pay to leave this area. Oh, it's amazing. We've done a fantastic job here. Oh my goodness, someone's done it. Someone else hit level two. Some Three people are at level two. Oh my goodness, people have actually hit level two. How have they done this? Let me discover these players. Oh my goodness. All right, well, we found him, ladies and gentlemen. This is the legendary Irin. Oh my goodness. He is one of our level two players. This man has almost two days inside of our game. What an incredible being. They've killed so many chickens and penguins, they are probably on some kind of watch list. My goodness, what an incredible universe we've created. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the wonderful look into Scam Art Online, the greatest and most profitable MMO in the known universe. If you'd like to invest in my Scam Art Online Kickstarter, then make sure to like the video and hop on down into the comment section and repeat the very important shareholder phrase of Scam Art Online is not a scam, invest now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our amazing patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously, Thank you very much, you lovely sausages. Without you, we wouldn't be able to be anywhere near this jazzy, so thank you very much. And hey, if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now. Trust me, if you enjoyed today's one, you're gonna love the next one. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Goodbye!